by getting all of your supplies out and ready to go. Remember to label any syringes containing drugs or medications. Attach the extension set to the three-way stopcock and syringe and ensure that all of the connections are very secure and make sure that your assistant knows how to operate the three-way stopcock. Start by selecting your optimal Centesis site using ultrasound. This may be on the left side or the right side depending upon the patient and whether or not they've been in prolonged lateral recumbency. This is usually at approximately the fifth or sixth intercostal space, midway between shoulder and elbow level. I like to circle my optimal centesis site with a marker and then infiltrate local anesthetic into that area, making sure that I go deep enough into the intercostal musculature to minimize discomfort as I'll pass the catheter through the chest wall. Your assistant can then aseptically scrub the site while you put your sterile gloves on and begin to fenestrate the catheter. When you fenestrate the catheter, you leave the stylet in the catheter and make small little apertures or windows in the catheter so that there will be less resistance to flow. Make sure that your holes are evenly spaced and small and that you're not leaving any burrs in the catheter or weakening its integrity. You would not want a piece of the catheter to break off inside of the patient. At the selected intercostal space, remember that you will want to advance your catheter along the cranial aspect of the caudal rib to avoid the vasculature that runs along the caudal aspect of the ribs. So I localize this site and then make a small stab incision over the site so that there will be less drag on the catheter as you pass it through the chest wall. Then get your catheter and remember that this is just like a gigantic IV catheter. If you look at the tip, you will notice that the stylet protrudes a couple millimeters beyond where the actual Teflon catheter starts. You can begin to slowly advance the catheter through the skin and then creeping along the cranial aspect of the rib. If you feel a gentle scratch along the rib, that can help you gauge your depth as you're advancing the catheter into the chest cavity. As your stylet encounters the pericardial sac, you may feel a small amount of resistance or subtle movement. As you penetrate the pericardium, you feel a gentle pop, like you sometimes feel when you enter a vein. When you enter the pericardial sac, you will see a flash in the hub of your catheter. At this point, you will advance the stylet and catheter together a couple millimeters, and then holding the stylet still feed the catheter off the stylet the same way that you would when you're feeding a catheter into a vein. As you're feeding the catheter, if you feel the tip come into contact with the heart, then you can probably stop feeding there or even back off a little bit. Remove the stylet and temporarily occlude the hub of the catheter while you attach the extension set. Your assistant can begin to aspirate the fluid by drawing back on the syringe. Prepare your samples for fluid analysis and then continue draining the pericardial effusion. When you are done, remove the catheter and place a bioocclusive over the site and monitor the pericardial space for recurrence of effusion over the next hour.